Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Arun and in today's video we are going to discuss SAP Client. This is the agenda for today's topic. Let's start with an introduction to SAP Client first. Uh, the number ranges of clients and default clients. Then let's take a look at how changes are transported between different clients. And finally the list of SAP transactions that are used for client administration purposes. So what is an SAP client? An SAP client is a separate entity within an SAP system that contains its own master data, transactional data and user master information. The data within a client is only visible to that particular client and it is segregated from other clients. So let me quickly explain what is master data, transactional data and user data. Uh, so master data, data that is required by the business to perform business operations is known as master data. For example, information about customers, information about employees and uh, its product information is considered as master data. So without master data, an organization cannot perform its day-to-day -day tasks. Transactional data, data that is created and changed on a day-to-day -day basis due to business operations is known as transactional data. Example, purchase orders, sales orders and service requests can be considered as transactional data. And what is user record or user master data? A record that contains important master data for a user in the SAP system is known as user master. For example, name, email, preferred language, as well as parameters, authorization, and user groups are known as user master. As I mentioned before, all these three different types of data are client specific, which means they can be read or written only by the assigned client and it is protected from other clients. But there are also client independent or cross client changes possible. For example, if the source code of the SAP system is changed or a new report is created, then that new report will be available to all the clients in a particular SAP system. Because the source code of an SAP system is common to all the clients within that SAP system. Moving on, number ranges of SAP clients. So SAP client number ranges from 000 to 999. So technically you can create up to 1000 clients in any given SAP system. But please keep in mind that the number of clients in an SAP system is equally proportionate to its database size and hardware capacity. In other words, if you create more clients in an SAP system, its database size will also increase, uh, which in turn you will require more CPUs and RAM to handle the load on the system. So it will also increase the complexity and operational overhead. Default clients. So when an SAP system is installed, clients 000 and 001 are automatically created as part of the installation process. Client 000 is known as the golden client or master client. Usually changes are not allowed on client 000 and it is only used for reference purposes. Client 001 is a copy of the golden client 000. So you can use client 001 to make further copies to satisfy your requirements. For example, a copy of client 001 is made to create a new client 100, which can then act as a development client where configuration and workbench changes are made. Clients in an SAP system are used for various purposes based on the technical and business requirements. For example, Development client is used to create new developments and customizations and testing client is used to perform testing. The training client is used to offer training to end users and production client is used for actual business operations. Now let's take a look at the change management process. So changes that are created in one client can be transported to another client within the same SAP system or to a different SAP system. A change can be either a configuration change that is client dependent or can be a workbench change that is client independent. Changes are transported among clients using a virtual container called transports. Transports uh, is, is one of the most commonly used terms in an SAP ecosystem. So depending on the project and complexity of the organization, hundreds or even thousands of transports are moved between clients and SAP systems on a day-to-day -day basis. A system called Change and Transport System, or in short, it's known as CTS, is used to manage and monitor all this movement of transports between the SAP systems. 
I'll create another video to explain the SAP change management process in detail. But on a high level, as you can see on the screen, there are three different SAP systems. A development system, a quality assurance system, which is also sometimes called as a test system and a production system. Each one of them has different types of clients. Changes usually originate in the development system and in the development client. It is then transported to a unit test client within the same system and also to a quality assurance system for end users to perform system integration testing and user acceptance testing. Once all the bugs are identified and resolved, the changes are moved to the production to perform the uh, production operations. So what is client copy? Copying a client to create a new one is called client copy. A client copy copies user records, master data and client specific customizing data across to the new client. There are three ways to perform a client copy. First one is called local client copy, which copies a client inside the same SAP system. And then remote client copy, which copies a client to a different SAP system. And then client export import method. This is also to copy a client to a different SAP system. The difference between this and remote client copy is that in the remote client copy method, RFC, which is also known as remote function call, is used to perform the client copy from the source to the target system. Whereas in the client export import method, the source client is first exported using a transport and then the transport is imported into the target SAP system. So that's the difference between remote client copy and client export and import method. So SAP transactions used for client administration purposes. SCC1, this SAP transaction is used to perform a client copy using a transport request. As we discussed before in the client copy section, the client export import method uses a transport to copy a client from source system to the target system. And the transaction SCC1 is used to perform that operation. SCC3, Transaction code SCC3 can be used to monitor the process of client copy that is running in the background or check the log of the front-end process. Please note that a client copy can be executed either in the back-end or in the front-end. If the source client's size is bigger, then it is better if the copy is done in the background so that the front-end operations are not disturbed. SCC4, this transaction is used to either allow or disallow modifications to happen in a client. SCC5 is used to delete a client and SCC7 is used to perform post-processing steps after a new client has been imported into the target system and SCC8 is used to perform client export, SCC9 is used for a remote client copy and SCCL is used for local client copy. Now we have come to the end of the video. I uh, hope this video was useful. Uh, please subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions, please leave a comment in the video and I will try to answer them. And also if you are interested, please check out my blog, I have provided the link in the description. Thank you for watching the video and I will see you soon in another video.